Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moldy Worm Gaming Channel. My name is Moldy Worm 41975 and today we're taking the Ford Julie down our rally course. <laughs> Welcome back to the rally series guys, hope you guys are having a great day and today we're going to be taking this, the Ford Super Duty down the rally course. It is a big old uh, Julie pickup truck actually designed for towing vehicles and uh, trailers and things like that. Um, but it is in Forza Horizon 5, I believe this is the first game that this vehicle has been in. So, I was keen to see how this thing actually goes down the rally course. Now, my theory with this is, it has two rear wheels, which are going to have a lot more grip than just one rear, wheel, uh, one rear wheel. And I believe this thing is all-wheel drive as standard, which is actually going to help the thing traction-wise. And, of course, the thing has a lot of weight behind it. And we've seen that some of the fastest vehicles that have gone so far, look at the Mercedes racing truck, the Lamborghini LM002, and the Land Rover Defender. Those are our top three vehicles so far, and all three of those are big heavyweight vehicles. So my theory is that the weight of the Super Duty is going to help it, along with those two rear wheels. But let's go ahead and actually upgrade the F450 and see what we can do with this thing. It starts off in D-Class 466, which is quite low, but we'll see what we can do with this thing. I am confident we can get it up into S1 class. Now, if you haven't seen this series so far, the only two rules that we really have is the vehicles must keep their stock drivetrain and all the vehicles will be upgraded to S1 class. All the vehicles will get three attempts at putting down the fastest time they can. And then at the end we will have a little look at the leaderboard and compare it to the vehicles that have run so far. So I'm going to walk you guys through my upgrades for this vehicle. You might upgrade it differently. Um, but I'll show you what I'm going to do with the vehicle uh, so standard it has a 6.7 litre power stroke diesel engine um, which puts out a lot of torque this thing has a lot of torque it is designed to tow trailers and other vehicles and stuff like that so um, that is great but not really what we want to do with it today so I'm sort of wondering what kind of uh, engine we want to put in here it starts off with 475 horsepower, not a lot, but it has a thousand foot-pounds of torque. So I'd like to reduce the torque a little bit to try and negate a bit of a wheel spin. I'm thinking something like this, the 5.8 litre V8 might be a good shout. It's a little bit more horsepower, but a little bit less torque. And it already bumps the vehicle up into C-Class. So we'll go with that. We might have to come back and swap it later on now the stock drivetrain is all wheel drive as i thought but you can rear wheel drive swap this if you like but if we've got all wheel drive then we're going to keep it we can go ahead and put on some turbos but i'm actually going to leave that unless we need the pi um we can also go ahead and put some rally lights on i guess we'll do that and we can actually put on the kind of like barja trophy truck style um like uh, spare wheel a holder thing I guess um, I don't know why the spare wheel is so far back I guess it's something to do with sort of like weight to try and balance out the weight or something it looks a bit ridiculous but we are building a sort of trophy truck rally car kind of build with this so I guess it looks quite good now all the vehicles will be running the off-road tyre compound, formerly known as the rally tyre compound if you played Forza Horizon 4. Now some of the vehicles in this series can only be fitted with the off-road race tyre compound, so they have a little bit of an advantage, um, but most of the vehicles um, that we are going to be running are going to be running the rally tyre compound. 
we are going to go ahead and slap on the widest tires we can because that's going to give us a lot more traction now the rear wheels actually sort of become conjoined into one so instead of like two rear wheels on each side we actually have like one massive wide wheel which looks hilarious but that's going to give us a lot of traction um let's go ahead and see what we can do in drivetrain here I'm going to go ahead and put in race clutch i'm going to put in the race transmission uh six speed that's what we want and we'll go ahead and put in some carbon fiber drive shafts and a rally diff now the thing actually sits quite high i think we can get off-road springs and dampers on this thing um but i don't think it particularly needs them but it is going to unlock the spring damper and alignment tuning which is going to be important uh when it comes to the tuning process of this thing we'll go ahead and put on some anti-roll bars as well we've got a lot of weight to control in this thing the thing actually weighs almost three tons so it is a big old unit of a vehicle and that is with the weight reduction normally it weighs just under four tons so it's uh it's a big vehicle, um, but we're going to go ahead and do some weight reduction. That's going to bump it up into A class as well. And then we're going to go ahead and do some engine tuning in here. Um, there's not going to be a lot we can do, but if we can get this thing up into S1 class, then that is all that matters. We may have to come back and actually uh, change the engine if it won't quite get into s1 class i don't think it is going to unfortunately no so we're just actually under s1 class but with this engine in it's actually going to be um right around where i'd want it to be to be honest a thousand horsepower 800 uh and 17 foot pounds of torque in something that weighs this much that would have been perfect but we're going to have to swap out the 5.8 lit 5 .8 liter and put in something else. I want something with a lot less horsepower if possible. I mean, we can put in like the uh, V8 twin turbo, but that's just crazy amounts of uh, power in this thing. And it's just going to be spinning the tires the whole time. So, hmm, I'm not sure what to do, to be honest. The V10 and V12 don't have a lot of torque. So I don't really want to go with one of those. I've had good success with the 6.2 litre V8. Um, so I think we'll go with that. Let's see if we can get this thing into S1 class with that. So B class at the moment. Um, let's actually just see. It's up into A class now. I don't think it's quite going to make it into S1 class even with these upgrades. Um, I'm not really sure. No. Okay, so it's not going to get into a S1 class with that engine either. So we're going to have to swap in something else. Um, I mean, these later ones will easily get it into S1 class, but they have so much power. The racing 7.2 litre actually might be a good shout. Uh, let's see if we can just get this thing into s1 class then i'll be happy um i'm not quite sure if we're gonna get it there or oh, we're literally one pi off um so that one's not gonna work either um i think we're gonna end up having to go for the uh, v8 twin turbo um ooh, let's try the v12 I mean, it's not the best vehicle to be putting a V12 in, but um, let's see. I think this is going to make it to S1 class. It is uh, a thousand horsepower, uh, 800 foot pounds of torque. That's not too shabby. Um, it is literally just into S1 class, but I'm going to, I'm going to call that. Uh, I'm going to say that's good enough. I'm going to do some tuning now. I'm going to paint the vehicle and then it's going to have three attempts at beating whatever our fastest vehicle is at the moment. I can't even remember. Um, it's, going to, it's going to have three attempts 
to put down a good lap time. All right, here we go for our first run in the Super Duty. Let's see what we can actually do with this thing. It gets off the line super, super well, actually. Um, a little bit of wheel spin, but on this tarmac section, actually quite good. Although there's a weird little twitch there. Not sure what that was. Now, we're going to have to get this thing slowed down way, way early for that first turn through there. I'm still used to driving the Gremlin from the last episode, so gonna have to keep an eye on that now through the water splashes this thing weighs so much it's not going to have an issue although understeer that is going to be our enemy i think in this vehicle <laughs> it was horrible uh amounts of understeer through the water section there now coming through here again another little bit of understeer let's see how it is on this corner for some reason, as weird as it sounds, the understeer to the left is not as bad as the understeer to the right. Now, coming down this section here, this is where some of the lower slung vehicles have issues on the bumps, but the uh, the Super Duty is kind of designed to be an off-road-esque vehicle, so it doesn't have too many problems soaking up the bumps through there. It's actually really controllable. Through the hairpin there, the V12, it has just enough torque to get us out the corner nicely without any wheel spin. Now, we might be a little bit on the grass through there. Not terrible, actually. A little bit of a twitch on the exit, though. Now, up the hill, let's see what kind of mile per hour we're getting up here. About 216 cresting the hill, which is actually quite impressive. That's a lot of weight to get up that hill. Now, the V12 was maybe not the best choice of engine to go in something this heavy. Typically, V10s and V12s don't have as much torque as something like a V8 turbo. Um, so maybe we would have been better off with the twin turbo V8. But to be honest, I think we're going to manage. Um, it is actually going to stop a lot of wheel spin. We've got just enough torque to get us around the course nicely and put down a good time. But coming across the line for our first run, it's going to be a 213.767. That is an impressive, impressive time for our first run in the Super Duty. I don't think this is going to ever be our fastest vehicle. I never thought it was going to be. But I was hoping it would kind of be a good mid-pack vehicle. And it's actually beaten the Audi Quattro Sport, which is a world-renowned rally car. So that tells you that the Ford is not a slow vehicle. It's only three seconds behind the Subaru WRX STI in seventh place. So we've got two more attempts. Let's see if we can shave off those three seconds and beat that vehicle. Okay, attempt number two. Let's see what we can do in the Super Duty for our second attempt. There's a few areas where I was knocking it up into fourth and fifth, maybe a little bit early. Uh, some of the corners we were getting understeer on, I could have braked a little bit earlier for, especially this one here. Uh, we actually get it turned in a lot cleaner and nicer through there. That was actually a good line through there. Now, we got quite a lot of understeer last time through here, so I'm going to slow it down early, and we are perfectly on the racing line through there. Now, the Super Duty is actually really, really controllable. As big of a vehicle it is, you can actually predict what this thing is going to do. You've just got to watch out for that understeer. But once you've driven this thing a couple of times and you've gotten used to that, it can actually be quite, quite a good vehicle. It soaks up the bumps really, really nicely. So a lot of the lower slung sort of sports cars and stuff, when you take them off-road, even with the um, off-road springs and dampers, tend to sort of bounce around on the bumps a lot more. Now... The F750 is kind of designed to go off-road, so it soaks up the bumps quite nicely. Um, but it is just so controllable. You can just predict where it's going to go. You can chuck it into the corner, and it will stick. Now, coming up the hill here, we got sort of 216 going up the hill last time. We're almost up to 220 on that one. So it's actually right up there with some of our faster cars that actually gives you an indication of how fast this thing can be now this corner here i i'm going to chuck it in a little bit because it is our first run 
Uh, let's see what we actually do in this section here. These these corners through here can be horrible, uh, especially for something that understeers this much. All right, coming down the hill now, we have surpassed the uh, Mercedes and Lamborghini's time. That was the WRX's time, but we've actually shaved off, I think, almost two seconds there off our previous run. Uh, so that is really, really good. I did say there that it was our first run. I meant I meant to say second run. Um, but a 211.965 is very, very good. Um, if we can shave off just one more second, then it will put the thing in seventh place just behind the Bentley Continental. So let's see what we can do in the final run. Round number three. Let's see if we can beat that Subaru in this run. It was uh, a little bit of a slow start off the line there. Not sure what quite happened. I think we actually might have stalled it off the line. Um, but down this section here, we can just be flat in the Ford. And then as soon as we see that braking zone then we are straight on the brakes now i've got the braking racing line on um i don't really need the racing line i've played enough racing games to know where the racing line is but because some of these vehicles um are heavier lighter than others have worse brakes better brakes it's hard to know sometimes where the braking zones are so i've got the braking line on just to give us a little bit of an aid um, but I've sort of gotten used to this Ford now. It is a uh, it is a solid vehicle actually. I'm impressed how well this thing is performing. Now down this section here, we can just be completely flat. I'm actually going to chuck it in flat through this corner here, and let's see if the Ford can stick it. It does. It waggles its tail around a little bit, but nothing terrible. I'm going for a second gear through the hairpin as well let's see if we can pick up another second through the hairpin now this section here down to third i'm going to go out a little bit wide so we can cut in early on the second turn which was absolutely beautiful there it actually feels like a faster run although we are slower towards the top of the crest there it's hard to know what gear we sort of want with this uh with this v12 in here it's uh, sort of third and fourth. Third is revving too much. Fourth, it's just lacking a little bit in torque. Um, but it's not terrible. I can deal with it. I've tuned the vehicle to the best of my abilities. Uh, coming into the last couple of corners here, we're definitely ahead of our previous run, but only by a second or so. So it's going to be all comes down to what we do down the hill here. That is the... 2 uh, 210 mark there it's going to be a 211 we shaved off almost half a second of our second attempt that is going to be the time for the super duty sadly it was just a second behind the uh, wrx sti subaru um i would have liked to have beaten that vehicle um, but sadly it could not do it but it was almost four seconds faster than the audi quattro so that is very impressive for the Super Duty. But let's actually go to that leaderboard and have a little look how this thing racks up. Well, there we have it, guys. That is going to be an 8th place for the Ford F450 Super Duty. A 2 minute 11.231 time. That is actually very impressive for a vehicle like this. When you look at the vehicles it is sort of in class with, it has beaten the Audi Quattro Sport by almost 4 seconds. And it is just behind the WRX STI, which are both world-renowned rally cars. And something like this, which is a little bit out of its element, let's be honest, is right in the pack there. It's keeping up with those vehicles. I'm not sure if the V12 was the way to go here, but I mean, it is right in that mid pack where I thought the vehicle would be. It performed how I thought it would. The understeer is a little bit annoying, but if you drive this vehicle a lot and you get used to that, I'm sure that's something you could deal with. 
over the course of the three runs i got used to the understeer it got easier and easier to chuck the vehicle in and know what it was capable of but this thing was so stable i can't get over how stable this thing was it just stuck like glue when you wanted it to and i think that comes down to the weight of the vehicle even with full weight reduction this thing was almost three tons so it's a big heavy vehicle but it looks awesome i really like the super duty i'm glad it's in the game is it going to be beating some of those top tier rally cars well no it's not but it's a fun vehicle to drive and to be honest if you're doing something like a team adventure then this thing is going to be right around the mid pack and you are going to be beating people using the super duty it has some cool looking upgrades and when you paint it something like this it actually can look pretty cool as well but that's going to do it for today's episode if this is the first episode you've seen of the rally series then make sure you go and check out the description below i'll leave a link to a playlist down there with all the rally episodes i've made so far and uh, if you want to get yourself some merch and also check out the description and uh, go check out my merch store there's quite a lot on there but well, that's going to do it for today. I hope you guys did enjoy and I will see you in the next episode.